where we will discuss in detail about continuity of a function at a point so whenever i have already mentioned that what is meaning of at a point at a point means that means you have to come up with a very small neighborhood of <coughs> Uh, neighborhood of that point of that very small means simply if you are taking a point C then there is a small neighborhood of point generally we take it delta point because we are dealing with the in, in order to define limit or continuity of a function at a point then we are dealing with two kind of neighborhood one we are calling it this one uh, delta neighborhood or C this point would be C plus delta this point could be c minus delta uh, in aggregate we denote it by v delta of c it happens to be a, an open interval with so first terminal is c minus delta and second terminal is c plus delta likewise also uh, this one is a uh, delta neighborhood with respect to point C and uh, with uh, further we will get a neighborhood of <coughs> along vertical in vertical axis of a real number L generally we call call it L and that neighborhood we are denoting it to, um, V epsilon around L centered at L and again this one is also uh, happens to be a an open interval L minus epsilon L plus epsilon so we, you had already seen that this one is along uh, horizontal axis or X generally we call it X axis at uh, this vertical axis we are calling func functional axis or Y axis also you can call it so that is the concept to in limit we had already seen that so we will generalize here the concept of limit uh, to continuity in sense that if this L is uh, happens to be functional value of functional value at point C then in that case uh, we will say that function would be con continuous so continuity limit and con there is a very uh, what we can very good relation with between uh, continue, limit and continuity but you will see that in continuity you you will have something more a strong relation than uh, limit in limit we had already discussed that when we are calculating limit of a function then we put a condition over uh, the point at which we are going to calculate limit that happens to be a limit point of the uh, domain of the function so then we say here condition one l would be sorry this point c it would be a it is a limit point or simply you can call it here itself it is a limit point of domain of definition suppose the function is defined from a to a uh, r now tell me then what is the difference between continuity in continuity everyone might be aware of that you are writing it like this way limit x tends to c f of x this definition everyone might might have already seen it, it would be equal to f of c then tell me what is condition on c here anyone it would be the same being a limit point of the domain of f or something more or something less than that anyone what is condition on c here here yeah it was while defining limit of a function okay at point c that time we are ne uh, we never bother about uh, uh, the value of function at c this we, we bother about uh, the small neighborhood of c okay in which whether the domain of that function is having point in that small neighborhood or not but when we are defining continuity here we don't focus on whether c is a limit point or not just we focus on condition that whether c belongs to domain of the 
set or not just this condition we we here in c we just focus on only this condition apart from that if c is a limit point very fine there would be no issue if c even if c is not a limit point then again we can define continuity at that point there would be no issue okay so it's just to, uh, in the case of uh, this is for limit and this one is the condition for continuity so in continuity we never bother about to whether c is a limit point of the set or not we have to bother about whether c is a member of the domain of the function or not so that we have to focus on that is the difference between limit of a function and continuity of a function at a point that is the difference and you will see that different later through few example okay so coming to outline of today's lecture i would first like to discuss continuity of a function at a point and further we will discuss about its uh, sequential characterization uh, because it always helps to simplify uh, continuity or limit or kind of concept then we will discuss uh, various law of limit and continuity in together uh, various situation you will see that uh, that we see, that means it is just helping to establish continuity of a function which happens to be in more complicated form then we will go to discuss about continuity of a function over an interval so generally continuity we discuss about point wise approach uh, point wise always we didn't, so it is a local nature when we uh, talk about something uh, which is point wise then simply it means that uh, we are locally discussing uh, that concept so, so after that we in the local framework we try to cover the complete uh, interval so that concept we will discuss and what kind of uh, changes or further property we will see uh, we will discuss it here so coming to continuity of a fun function and its a sequential criteria first i would like to give epsilon delta definition of continuity of a function then i will talk about sequential criteria so what is meaning of continuity at a point so consider a is a subset of real numbers and c is a point of that set a then we define a function uh, f from a to r then this function f it would be continuous at point c if for a given epsilon there exists a delta such that when x is coming from a delta neighborhood of c then it implies that corresponding functional value f of x will come from epsilon neighborhood of f of c so that is the epsilon delta definition of uh, continuity of a function at a point okay so in if geometrically if you try to see something more than that then it is approach is coming uh, from epsilon neighbor to delta neighbor for go, given epsilon we have to find a delta so suppose uh, you come up with a point c and you are trying to uh, establish a continuity of that function at that point so what you will do you come up with a epsilon neighborhood of c is so uh, <clears throat> this we generally denoted by epsilon neighborhood of f of c then what is happening that we have to find an delta neighborhood of c in such a way if you take any point from the delta this would be delta neighborhood of c if you take any point from this delta neighborhood suppose this point you are taking call it x then corresponding point would be in the epsilon neighborhood of f of c that is the definition of epsilon delta definition of continuity or more geometrically you can see like this way okay but if you talk about more application point of view then we always convert or come up with a sequential criteria of that concept so that's why we will discuss here sequential criteria of continuity of a function at a point so how we define so again uh, we are taking a happens to be a subset of a real number and c is any point of that subset then or it may be okay uh, uh, right now we just call it uh, i am not uh, giving attention much to limit point i am calling it it is a point just a point okay. and we are defining a function f from a to r then it would be continuous uh, at c if and only if 
we are able to write this uh, like this way so here limiting value of the function at c happens to be equal to f of x f of x then we say that the function is continuous so if you try to break out it further in more a specific way then we is we are having three important concept here first concept says that f must be defined at c that's why we say that c must be a member of the domain of function f must be defined okay so that uh, concept also we can say that f exists f of c exists also we can say in short okay second concept say that limit of limiting value of the function at c must exist okay that means existence of this limit and third concept is saying that uh, these two value what we got it in one and two must be equal to each other so that is three concept so these three together is defining continuity of a function at a point c these three if you bring it together uh, then you will get to claim that that function happens to be continuous at that point okay so that is the definition you you might have already seen in uh, plus two so we will first uh, uh, try to talk about sequential criteria so consider a happens to be a subset of r and c is any point then a function f defined from a to r it would be continuous at c if for every sequence in set a that converges to c then <coughs> such that the corresponding uh, functional sequence is converging to f of x then we claim that f is continuous at c okay if you are taking any sequence of points from a that is converging to c the corresponding functional sequence is also converging to f of c then we say that the corresponding function is continuous at c so remember that here we here i am not putting any condition we don't see any condition that x and would be different from c there is no such condition okay it was there in case of different definition of limit but it is not here in the definition of continuity just uh, we don't have that simply we are talking that xn it is a sequence of points from the domain of function f that is converging to c such that the corresponding functional sequence is converging to f of c then we claim that f is continuous so that is the sequential criteria then uh, what is the negation of this one that will negation of this sequential criteria of continuity of function it will talk about discontinuity of function so negation it say that the function f it is discontinuous at c if there exists at least one sequence xn which is converging to c but the corresponding functional sequence is not converging to f of c then we claim that that function is not continuous at c so that is the <coughs> point of discontinuity okay <coughs> so i will take the example here this one is a very famous uh, dirichlet discontinuous function it is all about that main job so you have to prove or uh, you have to come up with a, really, a very good reasoning or explanation that why this function is discontinuous so that one is very much important here and we will explain this one with the help of sequential criteria so a dirichlet function actually define it is in bifurcated way two way uh, it it would have two branch how it is defined so consider uh, a function a which is defined from real number to real number r to r in such a way f of x is f is taking value 1 when x is rational and f is taking value 0 when x is irrational okay this is dirichlet function and this function is discontinuous everywhere nowhere it is continuous this function is discontinuous everywhere and how we can prove the discontinuity so that uh, simply if you go for epsilon delta definition it would be very much complicated so we are going through um, sequential approach so we know that if you take uh, a real number the real number can be easily bifurcated into two part of real number 
one happens to be rational another happens to be irrational so so that scenario we will utilize in two framework okay so and we know that rational i had already discussed the rational is quantize quantize or simply you can say, say that rational numbers are uh, what uh, uh, set of rational number it is uh, uh, having a bijection from n to q or q to n or simply we can say that it is a countable set countable set countability we had already discussed that means every element of this set of rational number can be fitted in a single sequence countable set so that we had already discussed so we'll see that kind of pattern it here like uh, and uh, it, this one is not countable it is uncountable irrational is uncountable so there would be issue there but uh, here there there is one more interesting application of uh, what we call it uh, uh, real num property of real number that one is coming from completeness property that uh, uh, we'll say or uh, simply from the order property one uh, property of real number is coming that density theorem you might density theorem of rational or density theorem of real numbers what does it talk about it talk about it say that if you are taking any two real number if you are taking any two, two real number then always exist there exist a real number c if suppose these two are not equal to each other condition is if you are taking any two real number which are distinct which are not equal to each other then what is happening that always there exists a real number c which would lie between these two real number a and b that that one is the density theorem okay likewise if you take any two rational number if you take any two rational number then between any two rational number always there exists a rational number If you are taking any two rational number, then there exists a rational number between these two rational number such that that rational number C lies between A and B. Proof is directly coming from Archimedean property, and uh, that uh, properties of uh, uh, well. Ordering property of uh, natural number. If someone is interested, you can look uh, for that. And third property, it is not uh, just it is an, an another form of one, one. How we say that if you are taking any two rational number, then between two any rational number, always there exists an irrational number. If you take any two rational number between any two rational number, there exists an irrational number, and there exists an Irrational number that means infinitely many will come. Likewise, between uh, any two, <coughs> uh, let, let us denote it by uh, rational number R. Between any two irrational number, there always there exists at least one irrational number. Call it R dash. Always such criteria. So it is again part of. Uh, density theorem so i we are just up going to apply that in order to get sequential approach so so suppose c is any rational number then there exists this c at uh, we are trying to talk about continuity at a general point c so that c is that's why c we have taken so c suppose c is any rational number then it is very much guaranteed that there exists a sequence of irrational numbers that would converge to c that would converge to c okay and uh, we know that here c is rational so f of c would be what here for rational f of c is 
f of f of x for x if x is rational then f of x is 1 so that's where f of c would be equal to 1 if c is rational but we are uh, in the neighborhood of c we are getting a sequence of irrational numbers which are converging to c okay so that's where uh, what is happening that xn is converging to c but corresponding functional f of xn it uh, xn is here each xn happens to be irrational number so that's why f of xn would be equal to zero zero can't converge to one that happens to be functional value of the uh, functional value at c okay value function at c so that's why we are getting a situation like when xn is converging to c then corresponding f of xn is not converging to f of c that's why we say that the function f is not continuous it is not continuous at c when c is irrational not continuous at c when c is rational likewise also we can prove that when c is irrational if you are taking any real number c here domain of this function is re complete real number so that's where c would be either rational or irrational so second case when we take c is any irrational number then again there exists a sequence of rationals rational numbers that would converge to c but what will happen in this case as c is uh, irrational so f of c would be what f of c would be zero okay but here uh, in in the neighborhood of c uh, in the very small neighborhood of c we observe a sequence of rational that one is converging to c so f of yn uh, that uh, it would be equal to one why because yn each yn is in a it is a rational number so that's why f of we know that when x is rational f of x would be one so and here so that's why we are getting this functional sequence equal to one each member equal to one but one is not converging to the functional value of uh, functional value at c so it is not equal to f of c uh, that happens to be uh, equal to zero because c is irrational so again we observe here situation that from sequential criteria uh, f is not continuous at irrational point as well not continuous so in, whether c is a rational point or irrational point f is not continuous what does it mean that means uh, f is not continuous at every real numbers not continuous this f is not continuous this Dirichlet function is not continuous uh, at every real number that means Dirichlet, this Dirichlet function is discontinuous everywhere on r everywhere at, at every point it is discontinuous so that is the uh, um, most uh, oh, what we saw if someone is, is asking give an example which is discontinuous everywhere everywhere then this is the simplest example apart from that there are various other class of function which would be nowhere nowhere uh, continuous so such example we will see later uh, so now what is happening that there is one more interesting concept of uh, uh, or simply i would like to say the relation between uh, limit and continuity here uh, coming like this way through continuous extension sometimes what is happening that a function is not defined at a point but the limit of that function is uh, defined that exists at that point in that case we can uh, extend that function to a new function such in uh, in such a way the new function would be continuous so that that one is the continuous extension of, of the uh, the given function so how we define it like so we define like this way so sometimes if you are having a function f which is not continuous at a point because it is not defined at this point however this function f has a limit at point c if you define f on capital f this capital f as a continuous extension of f a small f on the domain a union c in that means here we know that f is this a small f is not defined at c that means c doesn't belongs to domain of uh, c doesn't belong to domain of the small f okay function f but uh, what is happening that we we take a new domain a union c 
and over that domain we are defining a new function f such in such a way f is equal to this capital f is equal to small f in the first domain a but outside uh, that at c f is taking value l so it is defined like this way that f of x equal to l if x is equal to c and f capital f of x equal to a small f of x if x is coming from the given set a then in that case we say that this function f is continuous at c okay so one example we can see it like this way if you are taking a function f of x uh, x times sine of 1 minus 1 by x then easily we can say that this function is not defined for x equal to 0 so that's where if you uh, if I am asking what is the domain of this function, then domain of this function simply be denoted by A. Domain of this function is it is all non zero real number, and that means from the real number we have su subtracted zero. So, this is the domain of this function. So, it is not defined. So, this function is not defined at x equal to zero. So, how we can talk about uh, continuity of this function at 0 because it is not defined at that point x 0 is not uh, in the domain of this function that's why uh, what we do we have to look for limiting value of this function at uh, x equal to 0 and we can see that limiting value of this function when x is approaching to 0 what does it is? it is equal to 0 and everyone knows that how to, how to calculate uh, uh, limiting value of this function at 0 using sandwich uh, or sandwich law or switch law you can easily calculate that so uh, what what is happening that we can extend this given function uh, to a new function would, would be that would be a continuous extension of f and how we define that function this capital f of x we are defining that it is capital capital f of x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0 and when x is non zero then it is just as obvious the old one same function so it is for non-zero uh, problem was there with when x was zero this function was not defined so for that case we are taking limiting value of, the, of this function at x equal to zero now the new function capital f of x it is a continuous function it is defined over so domain of this function is complete r it is and plot if you try to see it then plot you can see see like this way the oscillation it is d what uh, dumped down to zero here at when x is approaching to zero if you press it from uh, y equal to x and y equal to minus x then it just a squeeze to zero here at zero so that's where uh, here we can talk about this function is continuous at zero as well this capital f of x is continuous at zero that, that is the continuous extension of one function which is not defined uh, uh, at few points but limit exists now next part of this lecture is that we will discuss about uh, laws of limit and continuity and various other uh, consequences we will see it uh, what are the benefit of continuity we will see it here so one simplest uh, uh, law is coming through what what is happening that suppose a function is uh, continuous at uh, at a point then what is the first uh, thing that we can geometrically visualize in the neighborhood of uh, that f of c okay so for yeah, that that I had already discussed. Apart from that, we are just talking about uh, value of function in a very small number of uh, c. So, what is meaning of that? Uh, what we will discuss that? If limit exists, there is no issue. Limit exists. Suppose simply if a function f is continuous at c, then we can say that the function f is bounded on some interval of or some neighborhood of c. So the continuity of function at c simply signify 
that it is it is bounded in a small neighborhood of that and if you take uh, contra positive of this one uh, it is one kind of uh, continuity the continuity implies boundedness at, in a small neighborhood it is not like that i am saying that function is bounded in uh, throughout the uh, domain of the function i am not saying i am saying that local bounded so bounded on some interval it simply say that in short uh, in layman way you can say that it is talking about local boundedness local boundedness boundedness we can write it in short bdd and last uh, we can put it in any double s local boundedness so that is the concept and also this one is a uh, uh, helping in order to establish discontinuity of function it is uh, providing alternative way to check for discontinuity of function okay so uh, if you uh, have to find the bound of the function a at c or in a small neighborhood of c uh, then how we can find it so we just uh, we know that uh, we are having function is continuous at c so take the definition of continuity just uh, it would not come here definition of continuity and for given epsilon equal to 1 and from here just uh, play with uh, triangle infinity uh, play a little bit with triangle with this triangle infinity you can get a bound of f that happens to be this is the bound of f in the small neighborhood of c you got a bound of uh, F. for a given if silent equal to 1 uh, you are getting a bound this you can name it m and here i have already given name to this so it, it is actually equal to modulus of f of c plus 1 and it simply implies that f of c is less than equal to m for all x from this local neighborhood or a small neighborhood of c so that is the concept of boundedness so now how we can apply this <coughs> everyone know that here p implies q is logically equivalent to not q implies not q implies not p okay same concept uh, will be ap applied here that suppose we come up with a uh, neighborhood where the function would be unbounded and that will simply talk about the corresponding function would be not continuous at that point continuous at that point that is the criteria is, it is coming like like if you are taking a function 1 by x f of x equal to 1 by x then clearly you can see that this function uh, 1 by x it is not bounded in a uh, small neighborhood of 0 it is not bounded it is always unbounded in a small neighborhood of zero if you can see the plot of the function it is like this way okay so this this point is zero so we you can see here as a small as possible uh, neighborhood you can take around zero uh, in that neighborhood Function 1 by x would be never bounded. It would be always unbounded. In that case, we can simply claim that that's where this function is not continuous at 0. So it is just uh, this condition also providing another uh, framework to verify discontinuity of a function. Apart from that, there are few more uh, results. this we are calling it uh, algebra of continuity what is happening that uh, suppose we are having function f g h uh, which are continuous at c these function are continuous at c then we can talk about uh, uh, limiting value of uh, we can talk about continuity of uh, sum of function also difference of function so sum and difference of function it is defined as like this way as i had already mentioned that it would be sum of corresponding functional value and difference of corresponding functional value okay 
it is like this way so all these are algebra of what we call it, algebra of continuity simply it is just derived from a law of limit algebra of limit it, it it has been derived from there and these are just helping to find limit of various functions like uh, uh, here uh, or these are helping to find uh, established continuity of the function you can easily see that uh, if you talk about uh, uh, this function x square minus 4 uh, thrice of x minus 6 okay so if you i talk about uh, simply this uh, uh, function is not defined at x equal to 2 it is not defined at, at x equal to 2 that's why we are defining a continuous extension of this one either you can denote it by capital f or you can call it f cap <coughs> or f dash so you define it like this way <coughs> when x is not equal to 0 there is a not issue with this function so at not not equal to 0 it would be defined by the function itself it would be x square minus 4 divided by thrice of x minus 6 but when x equal to 2 it would be defined by <coughs> the limiting value that one is <coughs> 4 by 3 it is defined by limiting value now this function is continuous everywhere it is continuous everywhere <clears throat> likewise if you uh, again talk about this function this uh, there is a very nice result this, this function is continuous everywhere uh, we don't need to uh, what go to find continuous extension simply what we will do we will apply <coughs> this result we will find the uh, limit of value, limiting value of this one because it is defined at x equal to 2 as well and this uh, denominator is also defined at x equal to 2. So find the limiting value of these uh, numerator uh, denominators uh, separately and take ratio that would be the limiting value of this one and this, this one is also equal to f of c as well f of 2 c equal to 2. So that's why we are saying that this function is <coughs> continuous at 2 but here we say that this function is not continuous at c 2 this function is this f is not continuous this one is not continuous continuous at c but this one is continuous at uh, x equal to 2 it is continuous this f hat is continuous at x equal to 2 so that you have to see it okay. now <coughs> uh, Further, we will talk about a few more result of uh, continuous function. What does that? It is talking about that if you are taking a function and domain of that function is uh, happens to be an closed and bounded interval, then really you will see that uh, uh, various uh, interesting kind of result you will see it. This one is one of the result. One of the result it says that if a function is continuous on a close and bounded interval then always that function will have uh, at least one maximum and at least one minimum then it is talking about sure existence of maximum and minimum if function is continuous over a close and bounded interval so if you fail to <coughs> fail to have any or any one of the condition that one condition you if you function suppose function is not continuous then you can't claim that uh, that maxima or minima will exist or not you can't say that anything so it would be that would be a completely different kind of issue there is one if uh, this one is also failure that means your domain of the function happens to be uh, not a closed bounded interval then also you can't say anything about existence of maximum or minimum but if these two both are these two are true in together that means function is continuous and uh, and the domain of interval of and uh, domain of that function happens to be closed and bounded interval then you can always guarantee that the function will have uh, at least one maximum and one minimum always you can talk about so few example i have already taken it like this way so this kind of function you can see that if you talk about this function what is the domain of this function anyone 
notation you know that uh, this uh, yeah so domain is what it is close interval or open interval it is close interval dark circle is talking about it is close it is taking value uh, at a and b as well so here domain is close interval close and bounded interval so you can you see uh, minimum or maximum for this function because geometrically graph is already there here so where is minimum or where is maximum so here this d would be minimum this function is having minimum value at d and maximum value at c so you can easily identify you can visualize minimum and maximum value at least one minimum or one maximum okay likewise if you come to this function what is the domain of this function again it is a close and bounded interval so here if it, it, such kind of situation is here like this way then always you can talk about existence of minimum and maximum it is domain it is second function called domain so everywhere domain is here. so at c we observe maximum value and at a we observe minimum value this is the minimum call it f min and this one is f max so both value you are able to observe again you if you come to see here this function third function again it is the uh, domain is close and bounded interval that's where you observe minima and maxima so this point so here you can observe that here this one is minima this one is minima both are minima f min two minima you observe i am not calling it local minima i am calling it minima absolute minima okay and uh, uh, this uh, it is not local concept here uh, okay it is uh, talking about global minima global maxima and this one is the global maxima likewise if you come to talk about this function it is constant throughout in the inter interval so every point is a minima also every point is a maxima so everywhere maxima minima you you will observe sir, that so that's why why it is happening because the function first condition function is continuous second condition the domain is a close and bounded interval now uh, i will take a few example where you will see that uh, if you lose any 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 one of these two condition uh, it is it would be not a guarantee that you will get a maximum or minimum always if you lose like if you lose discontinuity continuity or if you lose um, close and boundedness of the interval then it is not guaranteed that always you will get a uh, maximum minimum so that situation is coming like this way so if you take this function so here easily we can see that what is losing here in this function domain is interval close and bounded interval ab second condition is satisfied there is no issue domain is close what is the losing point here anyone Here domain is closed and bounded interval. No, no, no. I am just asking in hypothesis, uh, which in this function, which point uh, here uh, with respect to this function, which point is missing? Here there are two points I had highlighted. One is continuity, another one is uh, closed and, bo and boundedness of the interval. So which point is missing for this function? continuity yeah so yeah so easily you can say that this function is not continuous at this point so it is a discontinuous function continuity is missing or simply it is discontinuous or you can say that continuity is missing that's why we can't say that uh, uh, about existence of uh, minimum or maximum we can't say because of failure of continuity because of failure or simply you can write it uh, say that continuity is missing better highlight the point continuity is missing at a point okay likewise just to discuss about second problem so here we can't say that maximum minimum 
due to that we don't have any information about maximum minima now in second example uh, what is the domain of interval what is the domain of this function it is open interval a b so uh, can we say that uh, uh, this function is having maximum minima both it is having minima not maximum why not maximum no directly don't say can't define it here function is continuous this point is fine this one is a very powerful theorem that i would like to highlight it is a theorem what kind of well well defined concept or theorem so i am talking from this theorem perspective so here this function is continuous but it is not defined over a closed and positive interval it is defined over a open interval domain of this function is an open interval due to this openness of the interval this function is not having x due to that so we can't say if the function is if domain is uh, not a closed bounded interval we it is not guaranteed that maxima and minima both will occur together both will the function will have both the thing so that's why here maxima is missing maxima is missing if maxima it would be at point b but but b is not in the domain of the function so that's why this uh, maxima is missing minima is there but sometime if you're lucky it may happen that the uh, function here uh, is uh, not defined it is defined in open interval not in a closed bounded interval despite of fact you will get maxima minima but these are just a lucky chance it is not always possible luckily you will get such situation it would be not possible always to get such such situation okay so other things i think we will discuss